poverty, it is now. Because the poverty mindset, somebody say poverty mindset, is the root of all evil authors. And wait until I introduce what poverty is. You'll be amazed. Poverty is not what you think it is. Poverty mindset is the root of all evil author. What do I mean by that? When God said to man in the creation, have dominion, it means that God is telling us to take charge of what he has already given to us. Everything is already set and God is calling us to take charge of it. So therefore, you will notice that in the process of having dominion, there are several things that play out in that Genesis 1, 26 to 28. Number one thing that play out is understanding what we have been given. Understanding what we have been given. Because if you come to me now and I give you my Swiss passport. By the way, I'm a Swiss citizen. And I give you my Swiss passport and I said it's yours. If you don't understand the value of the Swiss passport, you might go home and use it as a playing toy or you can give it to your children to paint on it because you don't know the value you don't understand what it is but when you understand what God has given to you then you will jealously guide it so if you don't know the value of a thing abuse is inevitable and that's why many people that are parading today in, in the kingdom, many of them might not know the value of the gift that they carry. And that's why the enemy is attacking them. Because they really don't know who they are. They really don't know what God has deposited in them. I'm trying to find where my time is. Okay, I can see it. They really don't know what God has deposited in them. So, so it's important for us to understand that altar is a place that God has given to us so that we can be able to have what we call authority. Somebody say authority. It's the same. Dominion is a place of authority and a place of stewardship. Dominion is a place where we reflect God's image. Somebody say God's image. Dominion is a place where we subdue the earth. We overpower the earth. So once you know what God has given to you, you will no more be intimidated by the circumstances and by what is happening around you because you have the authority, you have the power, and you have the ability to subdue. Somebody says subdue. Then dominion is also a place of responsibility of leadership. Somebody said responsibility of leadership. And then dominion is also a place of cultivating. Cultivating what God has put in us. The ability God has given to us. And then dominion is a place of multiplication of blessing. Somebody said multiplication of blessing. So if you see in the Bible that God has given man dominion, the only reason why Adam and Eve lost this dominion was because they did not know the true value of what was handed to them. So I was letting you know that altar started in the book of Genesis because in the book of Genesis, more especially verse 21 of chapter 3 of Genesis, the Bible made us to understand that when Adam and Eve sinned, God came to the garden and God asked them, where are you? And they said, when we heard your voice, we went and hid ourselves because we were ashamed 
because we were naked. But what was really important here is that because they were ashamed and they were naked, the Bible said that they sow for themselves a fig tree and cover themselves. And then God saw that the fig tree that they used to cover themselves was not enough to protect them. So God had to kill an animal and take the skin of the animal and cover them. So watch this. That is the first altar that was established an altar of sacrifice for protection of humanity. Because instead of them to be moving around with fig tree that has no power to protect or cover them, God covered them with a blood of an innocent animal. So that was a shadow of what Jesus was going to do for us when he came. Somebody say amen. So that was the shadow of what Jesus was going to do for us when he will fully sacrifice himself on the altar of Golgotha so that we can be free from our sinful nature because man could not help himself and therefore God has to step in. Instead of man dying, God allowed the animal to die. Are you with me? So the first altar was established on the altar of sacrifice for the sake of you and I. Therefore, I submit to you today that the reason why Adam and Eve fell into the deception of Satan through the serpent was because of poverty mentality. Why? Because poverty is not an absent of things. Poverty is a spirit. Because it's a spirit, it's a mentality and it's a stronghold. And therefore, you can be as rich as Rockefeller and you still have poverty mentality. I came to tell you that majority of the people in the kingdom, their challenge today is poverty mentality. It doesn't matter where you are in life. You can have all the money in the world if you have poverty mentality. Now watch this. Poverty mentality will tell you I need more. You didn't get it. Poverty, that's why you can have somebody in the highest office. You can have a millionaire and they are still ready to kill somebody in order to have more. They are poor. Oh, you didn't hear me. That is real poverty because a real poverty will always tell you that what God has given to you is not enough. There is more somewhere and it doesn't matter what it takes for you to get whatever you want to get. You will do everything to get what you want to get. So I came to tell you, don't be naive because I am coming from Switzerland and in Switzerland outwardly, you will say they are one of the richest country in the world but I want you to know that inwardly, they are very poor. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. You didn't hear what I said. Why do I know that they are poor? I know that they are poor because there is what we call the lack mentality. Do you not lack mentality? Let me tell you a real... I don't know how I will explain this. Anybody that is poor, that have poverty mentality, watch them. It doesn't matter who they are. They can be a president, but they will still want more. They can, oh, they can be a minister, they still want more. They can be a millionaire, they still want more. But it doesn't matter what it takes them to have more. If they have to step on somebody, if they have to kill somebody, if they have to destroy somebody, they want more. But what we come to destroy in the church today is poverty mentality. We are saying enough is enough. Enough is enough. Because they, 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 that's why I told you that poverty mindset is the root 
of all evil authors. Because in, if you have a poverty mindset, number one, you will find yourself that you are in the level of lie. Lie. Poverty mindset we cause you to lie. You can lie about things. You know the reason why people lie? Because they are afraid that the things are not going to turn out well. And if you begin to lie, you will realize that you are operating under poverty altar. When you are under poverty altar, you will realize that you cannot be straightforward, you cannot be trusted, you cannot be truthful because you are controlled by poverty mindset. Let me tell you the only reason why Adam and Eve lost their dominion in the garden is because of poverty mindset. Because Satan knows if he can succeed to convince them that what they have is not enough. There is more to come. That is why they succumb to that deception. Because they come to the point that they have accepted that what they have is not enough. But brothers and sisters, you and I know that they earth is the Lord and everything in it belongs to him and he has given it to man as for us to have dominion and so how can you still be wanting more even if the whole earth has been given to you therefore it is a spirit it's a spirit it's a spirit so if Eve did not allow Satan to come and sow that discord, that evil spirit into her. There was no way she would have been able to see that what God has given to them was not worth for. But I want you to know that if you are operating on the poverty mindset, on the other poverty spirit, one of the things that will come in your life is that you will see yourself being wanting for more. Now listen to me, ambition is different. Can I say it again? Ambition in life is different from greed. Because if God give you something and you always want more and you want more and you never see what God has given to you and never appreciate what God has given to you, you are greedy. There is a wrong spirit that is ruling you and that's not godly spirit. So I pray in the name of Jesus that every poverty mindset will be broken in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Therefore, then, then I also want you to know that poverty spirit introduces us to the altar of failure. Somebody say altar of failure. Author, watch out. Anyone that is operating from poverty spirit, they are always afraid to fail. They are always afraid. They are doing everything to overcome failure. And then, author, I'm just moving very fast. Maybe tomorrow I'm going to go a bit, uh, on Friday, I'm going to go a bit deeper. But listen to me. Altar of weaknesses. Altar of weaknesses is coming out of poverty mindset because poverty mindset will always tell you that you are weak you are not able to do this you are not able to do that and then number three it brings you confusion it brings you what confusion so when you are under the influence of poverty mindset now watch this whether it is the poor people that you call poor or the rich people that have poverty mindset all of them you will trace that everything I'm teaching you today is running in both of them. Whether the richer of the richest or the poorer of the reporters, you will see that you can be rich and be confused. Oh, you didn't hear what I'm saying. You can be rich and be confused. You will see also that you can be rich and be weak and be fearful. So number three is confusion. And then number four is that author of poverty introduces to mental problems mental problem can i can i suggest something to you switzerland and top of the most of the top european and western world they have more mental problem than anybody you can think of in the world a lot of people are committing suicide by the day in switzerland i'm telling you people kill themselves and people also go there is a place in switzerland that you go and you tell them that you are ready to die and they kill you they give you a date. They give you a date when you're going to die they, so that you can call all your friends and tell, tell them goodbye, you know, and all those things. And then when that day comes, they kill you. 
Yes. So, and then people, other people choose to jump in front of the train. Other people choose, you know, suicidal. So, so, and these things, I mean, now, the newest one they have now is a hotel, man of God. The newest one they have now in Europe is a hotel. You, you, there is, a, you check in in the hotel. Can you imagine? You use your own credit card and you check in in the hotel to go and key yourself. They have put everything that you will use to key yourself in the hotel. So as soon as you check in, you sign your death warrant that you are dying. And then you go in there and you kill yourself. You check out. You check out of this world. You see. <laughs> so, 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 so poverty. Listen, this is a deep matter. I don't have time to do justice to this, but I will come back tomorrow. Is that, is that, I mean, on, on Friday, and we will deal with this matter because this thing must leave our land, because this thing must leave our churches, this thing must leave our family. We will not allow poverty mindset and evil altar to continue to rule us in this nation. Somebody say, I receive it. So, so the root of our problem, that's why you see people in America killing themselves. You see people in Europe killing themselves. You call them rich country, but they are dying. You and I, tell me who want to die here in Africa. We, we are not ready to die. We don't have the money, but if you come to life, we want to live life. Because I want you to know, Africa, we are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. So, so the root of all evil authors is poverty mindset. And that's why you must listen to us. Because the message we are bringing you in this season is a message of liberation. Number three, author of poverty. Listen to me. Author of poverty introduce you to what we call evil covenants. Evil covenant. When you want to join secret society, why is it that the rich people want to join secret society? Because they want more. Because in that evil covenant, they promise them more money. They promise them more riches. That's why they want to join this evil. They want to join the other evil. Because they are being controlled by the altar of poverty. Because the altar of poverty is the root of all evil. Somebody say, God have mercy. Therefore, let me conclude with these two and we pray and I hand over the microphone. The altar of, of poverty also introduces us to witchcraft and kingdom of darkness. That's why when you see any nation that is moving in perpetual wickedness, in perpetual evil, is because they are controlled by the altar of poverty. And if you notice, let me tell you, don't be deceived, there are more evil in the western world than Africa. It's just because our witches and wizards, we confront them. Our witches and wizards here, we confront them, we challenge them. In, in America, they don't challenge them. They are petting them. You know, they will be speaking with you, I'm afraid, you know, and they are killing you. Oh, you did this. Oh, I'm telling you, some of them, they'll be kissing you, but they are kissing you to death. They'll be romancing you, but they are romancing you to death. Because there, there is a real wickedness that is hidden. Is hidden in good talk. Is hidden in mannerism. Is hidden in different aspects of the society. But if you don't take care, they will kill you softly. But Africa, if we see a witch, the whole family will gather and deal with the witch. Rise on your feet. Rise on your feet. Rise on your feet. Rise on your feet. Every evil altar, every wicked altar, every demonic altar, every satanic altar, every altar of poverty in your father's house, in your mother's house, we uproot them. Hey, is somebody ready to pray? We have no other remedy apart from prayer. Somebody say, my father, my father. As I began to pray, every mindset of wicked altar, altar of poverty, altar of confusion, altar of wickedness, tormenting my life. As I clap my hand, and I began to pray. Out! Out! Lift up your voice and pray now. Pray, 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 pray. Rekatarababa. Reketeriaba. Mandarin.
Maria Bande, Reka Turia Bandia, Maria Bande Rebo, Makataria Bande, Imanderia Bande, pray, 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 pray. Every altar, every evil altar, every wicked altar, altar of poverty, be uprooted, be uprooted, be uprooted. In the name of Jesus. Listen, if you are here, you want to lift up your hand because we cannot allow you to come here. There is no space here. But wherever you are, you want to lift up your hand. And if, listen, I hear the Lord says, there is somebody here. The Lord is going to liberate you today. And the Lord is going to take you out from every poverty mindset. Because I see it's a stronghold in your family. And every poverty mindset that anytime you want to succeed, it brings you backwards. That evil altar must be uprooted today. Every poverty mindset that is responsible in you not going to the place God wants you to go. Some of you, you have applied for visa so many times. It never worked out. I come to break that spirit today. Some of you here, you are struggling. Listen, man of God, in 2005, the Lord told me I was elected as one of the 20 Christians in the entire nation of Switzerland to go and pray in the parliament house of Switzerland. I don't know what you call it here. Probably here it's a state house. But that's where the president is. And when we get there, I said to the 20 Christians that come with me, I said the Lord said we must erect an altar. We must lift up an altar in the parliament house. And they say, what this African boy, I think you are too crazy. We are not here to do all this spiritual thing. We are here to pray, just small prayer. I said, no, I didn't join you guys for a small prayer. I join you guys to change atmosphere and say, I am here and we must erect an altar. So we went to the terrace. We went to the top of the parliament house and we lifted an altar. And of course, you know what that means as a Christian. We didn't put any conjure or conjure thing. We spoke the word prophetically. We pray prophetically. And we say from today, this nation must stop going down Christianity wise. Must start going up. I say from today, things are going to change. My God, from that very day, the Lord said to me, John, you have no idea what you have just done. What you have just done today, heaven has opened over the nation. Now watch this. The things that never happened in the nation before began to happen. This was in 2005. In 2006, the police, Switzerland is a police country. The police called me that they need me to come and speak to them. Now watch this. So they gathered in their number. It's like a conference. They gathered in their number and they say I should come and speak and then they said to me on only one condition if you promise us you will not pray I said yes no problem I will not pray because this is a moving altar this is a prayer oh, yeah, you didn't hear what I said you didn't hear what I said I said no problem I will not pray I uh, just let me come and as I enter as I enter in their midst and then we, we I began to speak to them um, ladies and gentlemen before I could speak for five minutes, every prayer I can pray in the world was in my message. Oh, you didn't hear what I'm saying. And by the time we are done, by the time we are done, they give me all kinds of preferential treatment and they pay me for speaking to them, talking about the king's mindset. How do you think outside the four walls of the church? Now listen, now what else? When we begin to move in the nation, the, the Lord told me, he said, John, you cannot continue to have church in your church. You have to take the church in the street. So I, I tell them to call the police of the nation. Now don't forget, I have gone to the police station and I have spoken to them in a conference and God has given me authority over them, dominion over them. And now God said, I want you to take the church to... So I 
say to my secretary, call the police station and tell them that we are coming to the street to have church. And listen to me, when they call the police people and they say to the police people that I said that we want to go to the street to have a gospel concert and have a preaching there, they say no that that doesn't happen in Switzerland because their street must be decent and nobody should come and preach the gospel. And then listen now and then I, the Holy Spirit reminded me that he has given me dominion over them. So he said call them and use your own voice and speak to them. So I called the police station in my city and I said to them this is John Sego calling. I want you to know that I need the permit to go on the street and have a gospel concert. Am I clear? And then they said to me when do you need it how do you need it now watch this watch this don't clap because my time is up now watch this they said to me we we you, we are only going to do it in one condition i say what is the condition they say if you can bring the gospel to our police station we want you to come and sing the gospel song for us in our police station these are things that have never been done before in switzerland so i gather all my worship team and we go to their police station and we set up our band We set up our band and the police uh, officer came. All their big guys came and we began to sing. We sang the first song. By the time we are finishing the second song, they say your song is very nice. You can go to the street and do whatever you want to do. Now let me down, let me down, let me down. Don't clap, don't clap, don't clap. Here is the testimony part. The, when, I, when, I get, when we get to the street and we lift up worship and we lift up gospel, by the time we are done that very day, the chief of the free mercenary in my city show up. He said, who in the world give you guys permit to come and shake our city the way you are shaking it? And I said, really? Are we shaking your city? I thought we were doing gospel. He said, no. There is something that is moving in the realms of the spirit. I said, yes, that's the goal. And by the time we are done, by the time you know it, heaven has opened over the city. And now here is the next thing that happened. I'm just telling you all what happened after altar has been erected. And here is the next thing that happened. After we have opened the door and the, we have done that gospel concert, the next thing that happened is that the Lord told that every year we must do a conference called prayer conference and we begin the prayer conference in that city and that prayer conference I draw all manner of breakthrough but here is the final one as I conclude this was happening in May in May there is a factory very close to, to my church our church building we bought it in the year 2007 we bought our church building our current church building but I, I heard the voice of the Lord. He said to me in May, he said, John, the way you take dominion over a nation is not just by preaching, it's by possessing properties. He said, it's by processing properties because God said to Joshua, everywhere you will trade the foot of your soul, I will give it to you. He said, it's time for you to begin to buy properties. And then the Lord said to me, I want to give you the entire street. I want you to buy the entire street where your church is. I want to give it to you. So in May, the Lord said to me, go to your neighbor which has a factory, the biggest factory in my city. He said, go and tell him you want to buy his place. And what this started, this started in a way that he said first of all go and tell him that you want to rent his parking space so I went to him and I said I want to rent your parking space while we were having the meeting bishop talking about parking space Holy Spirit said that's not why I asked you to come here I didn't ask you to come and rent parking space I, I told you to come and buy the place so I then switch over because I know the voice of God when I hear it I switch over reverend and I said we want to buy your property. And the man looked at me and said, really? I said, yes. And he said, do you know how much it's going for? I said, I don't know. He said, it's six point something million. That's equivalent of six point something million US dollar. The Lord said, tell him you will buy it. Money is not your problem. There is a lot of money in heaven. So I opened up my mouth. I opened up my mouth. I said, I will buy it if you can give it to us. The man said, really? I said, yes. He said, okay, I'm ready to sell it. As we speak right now, when I go back in September, we are signing the contract. They have moved out of the place i came to tell somebody get ready because every altar of poverty is broken somebody says broken 
Man of God, when I'm preaching on Friday, I'm going to show you the picture. I'm going to show you the visual. If you enter my street now, where you came, or you, if you enter the street, we have bought the whole street. Hey! Jesus is winning. Jesus is winning. Now lift up your hands. Say in the name of Jesus. Say every evil altar in my family, every altar of poverty, I decree and declare in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah! Man of God, do I have one minute to pray for addiction? Do I have one minute? Now listen to me. Listen to me. Let me do this quickly. There are people here, you know somebody in your family or you yourself, you are addicted with one thing or the other. I hear the Lord say, don't hand over the microphone until you break that evil altar. If you are here, can you quickly run to the altar if you can? Run, 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 run. If you are here, run, run. You know somebody in your family or you yourself, you are. Because I believe that God wants to do something mighty. Run, 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 run security i know i'm gonna give you a lot of work now but allow me to do this quickly 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 can you can you do me a favor can you do me a favor can you do me a favor let's do it quickly let's do it quickly let's do it quickly um yeah i know it will be chaotic i i thought as much i, I thought as much i i thought as much is it well is it well okay because I saw the crowd. I saw the crowd. I didn't want to do the thing. But I know, I know. But since, since Reverend said I should go ahead. Because Reverend, look at your back. They are still coming in their numbers. <laughs> they are still coming in their numbers. So, so be, because I know I was touching on something. I know I was touching on something. I know I was touching on something. I know. Uh, and if you come, stop praying, stop praying, stop praying, stop praying, stop praying, stop praying because we are breaking. 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 We, you know, if we can do, man of God, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, can all the men and women of God in the front row, can you come and stand with me here, please? Because this is something very important concerning the nation. Please, take your belongings. Come and stand with me. Come and stand with me. Come and stand with me. Pray, pray, pray. Hallelujah. Pray, 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 pray. We are overcoming that evil altar. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Pray now. Pray, pray, pray. Any spirit of addiction, any altar of addiction, ravaging the nation of Kenya, we decree and declare in the name of Jesus, every altar of addiction fighting the nation of Kenya, we decree and declare Rekataraba, Rekatariaba, Rekaturiaba, Rekatariaba. Yes, 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 yes. Pray, 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 We overcome every other. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Pray now. Pray now. Pray now. Ye kataraba, re kataraba, Maria Panderebo. Every altar, altar of addiction, every evil altar, fighting this land, fighting our family. We decree and declare, your time is up. Listen, listen, we are not here to excite the people. 
we are here to break a spirit and that spirit is called evil lotter that spirit is called evil lotter Rekataba sekete mande reboko toriaba man of god i can boldly tell you that on friday something is going to happen in this place on friday i can boldly tell you that but this is what i want us to do if, can we get microphone yes that's exactly that's what i want us to do listen 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 shh shh please we don't have all the time we don't have all the time we want to be wise in what god has asked us to do and listen a new kenya has begun a new Kenya has begun. And, and, and if I be a man of God, what we are doing right now, a lot of testimonies are going to come out of it. A lot of healing, deliverance are going to come out of it. What we are doing right now. And, and it is it's really in my heart because we know the topic of this conference. The topic of this conference is that we are uniting with Christ Jesus. And I want, to, I want us to, to be aware that for these fathers to make time for this session and for the entire conference, it means God is doing something. It means God is doing something in Kenya. If this is not common. Don't take it for granted. I, I don't live here, but I'm telling you what I'm seeing in the spirit, man of God. You know, don't take it for granted what we are seeing here. So we are going to join our voice together. And we are going to say, because I, I, don't, I don't live in Kenya, I'm just speaking as a prophet of God. And I'm telling you, this altar of addiction has been one of the primary problems that we are facing in this nation that is causing people not to reach their peak in the kingdom and in the assignment God has given to them. And if we can deal with this collectively, man of God, I'm telling you, this is huge. This is huge. So I'm going to allow the fathers to pray blessing over this nation and to say we are, the era of addition is over. Go ahead. Raise your hands towards the fathers and towards God right now. I'm going to keep on praying and pass this microphone to the fathers who are here yeah. so they can pray over you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The name that's above every name. The name to which every knee must bow. The name that has been given above every other thing that is mentioned here on planet earth. Including alcohol, drugs, marijuana, pornography, yes. sex, yes. codeine, yes. whatever medicine. Keep your mind, whatever it is that is causing addiction, right now, right here, yes. in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Amen. break, break, yes. break, yes. break, 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 in Jesus' name. Amen. I will decree whatever addiction mm. and you shall declare mm. broken. Mm. Everybody in this auditorium say broken. Broken. Declare it with the holy anger. Broken. Broken. Every evil addiction. Broken. Every spirit of alcohol. Broken. Every spirit of poverty. Broken. Every spirit of sex. Broken. Every spirit of adultery. Broken. Every spirit of addiction. Broken. Bangi. Broken. Bangi. Broken. Drugs. Broken. Evil. Broken. Backbiting. Broken. Poverty. Broken. Failure. Broken. In Jesus' name. Amen. Celebrate it's broken. Hallelujah. Celebrate. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We are not wrestling with flesh and blood. We are wrestling with unseen forces of darkness. And in Jesus' name, we confront you, devil. You have no place 
in the homes, in the places where enemies has come in. In Jesus' name, we declare complete defeat, complete defeat, defeat all the alcohol, defeat all the man, what, what you, all those kind of evil. That is our young people going through. In the name of Jesus, we declare you devil. Defeated. You have ears, but those ears are not for the saints. Those ears are the one that are reversing back to you. And in Jesus' name, we have the authority now. Thank you, Father, for your servant. Thank you, Lord. It is done and done in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus. The prophet has spoken. Your word has come to us. And we have discovered that there is an altar that has controlled us, controlled our people in their sacred lives. And today, in the name of Jesus, we agree that the prophetic move is released to break this power of the altar. That altar that has made people slaves. That altar that has made people addicted to things that they cannot say publicly. We command you to fall in the name of Jesus. We command you to be destroyed in the name of Jesus. And we release the spirit of the prophetic move to deliver these people that are far and near and even to deliver us that are here. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus and give him glory for that awesome time we have had in his presence. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, if you've appreciated the ministry of Apostle John Sego, please put your hands together. Somebody shout, I am free. Shout, I am free. Shout it one more time. Shout, I am free. Now, if you mean to give God praise, put your hands above your head and just... Thank God for what he's done. Thank you, fathers. Thank you, fathers. You may go back to your seat. Thank you, Jesus, for your ministration. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless 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 you. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Papa. Bambuleo. Thank you, Apostle John Sego. That was so powerful. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.